So there's no other way to say it. You have some critical decisions to make. Own a warm season grass? There are certain cutoff points that we have to think about. And they're critical decisions. We need to understand the cycle of a warm season grass. Why am I talking about this in the summertime? Because in a few months, we're gonna to start to have temperatures cooling and there are certain things we can't do or shouldn't do once that time approaches. So there are things that we need to do now and decisions we need to make to balance out that schedule. So I did something different in this video. I always build a separate web page for each video. In the description below, I'll link to it. And what I did on that page uh, is I actually sat down last night and I wrote up a summary sort of schedule, things to think about for the upcoming months. While I was writing it, I tried to find links to, if I talked about any of the products all the way down, I tried to link to all the products that I'm talking about there to make it easier. But the first thing I wanna do is I wanna walk you across the street. A lot of you guys, if you follow my channel, uh, Bill and his wife bought a rental, the rental house that's across from us. And when they bought it, it's, you know, 17 year old house, 17 year old sod, and it was almost all weeds. I would say 80% weeds, 20% Bermuda. Well, last fall when they moved in, you know, they're looking at my lawn. I said, Hey, I'll help you out. No problem. So I went ahead and we started to put them on a program where we did the weed kill off. We did heavy pre-emergent. And then we started doing the feeding program with them. Uh, I got to show you that lawn. I gotta, I'm going to walk over across the street here. I actually walked over earlier. And I got to show you that lawn. That's, I got to say I'm proud of that recovery over there. He's doing a great job. He's actually cutting this with a zero turn. But he's cutting it like two or three times a week. Uh, they're edging. They're doing all the right stuff. And we're just following that simple program. So I'm going to walk over there first. Then we'll come back. Um, and I'll talk about, I'll walk you through this sort of schedule, what we're thinking about, things that I'm doing. The Good Witch came out yesterday and cut this, and man, it just, look at that. I mean, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. Just phenomenal. Again, we're cutting just below three quarters of an inch. Now, this is the test patch that we worked with that was basically looked like a field a couple years ago. It's looking pretty good, this lawn over here, because it's amazing. So if you remember, one of the things we did, this whole area in here was dirt. Do you remember that? That used to be dirt. And look at the run of growth here. This is crazy. When you put down the right food, where we're putting down, this PGF balance has caused this. It's pretty cool. I want you to see this. Now this is the shocker right here. Look at that. Is that amazing or what? That was solid, almost solid weeds before. Look at it now. Look at how good that lawn looks. No seed on here, just bringing back the original sod. So in the Bermuda Lawn Guide, I talk about this. And other videos that I've done, I talk about this. You don't reseed just because your lawn looks like crap. You work the program to bring back the original sod is what we do. Um, the reason why I'm cutting in here is because this new product that we're playing with and developing with Andersons fits into this scenario perfect. We're talking about cutoff times and you have to have a certain amount of time with warm season grasses. In other words, you don't want to do something when you know in two to four weeks you're going to have cold weather move in. So you wouldn't want to do a scalp when in two or three weeks you might have cold weather move in. You don't want to do that. Core aeration, you don't want to do that. I'll talk about that in a minute. But this new product, which um, I went to Anderson's and I said, here's the concept of this product. I want a granular product that has all the great features of your product, but I want it to be instant fast releasing. I want it to work as fast as a liquid. So this new product that we're coming out with, I'll have the first full size bag of it this week. It's already been in the lab for being developed for almost two months. You can put it on your lawn and you water it, water it, water it, boom you get an almost instant green response. Within 48 hours, you'll start to see a green. 72 hours, you really see a green. <laughs> it's just almost, it's a really cool product. But the basis of this product is exactly what I'm talking about, is giving you, the lawn owner, the, the turf manager, instant and total control of how your nutrients are delivered. So as an example, in the fall, 
your lawn's looking a little bit weak and you're like, man, should I put some fertilizer down or not? Well, do you really want to put down a fertilizer that lasts eight weeks? Not really. Not if maybe in three or four weeks you're going to have some cold weather move in. There's a chance of it. So what do I put down? Let's say you did a scalp. So you came out here and you scalped your lawn. Well, you put down a slow release fertilizer. Slow release fertilizer is just that. It's a slow release. It's going to feed for six, eight weeks or so. Well, I want to push some nutrients in my lawn fast. How do I do that? You can do it with this product. <laughs> it's almost instant, I'm telling you. It's designed to shoot the perfect balance of nutrients, a little bit of iron, humic acid. It shoots it into the lawn almost immediately and you get an immediate green pop. Let's give you another example. Um, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, you put down some fertilizer and you got a, you're having a party at your house and you're like, man, my lawn just doesn't look really dark, dark green like I want it. Well, you can take this product, put a light coat of this product out, water it, water it, water it, get it in, and boom. I'm telling you, within 72 hours, dark green lawn. That's what we've done with these testing strips and testing spots. I will have more for you on this next week. I'll show you some of the testing. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what the name of the product is, the website sort of being organized right now. And I'm told they're shooting for September 1st, so you guys, a limited run, that you guys will be able to order and play with this year. Uh, so that, that ought to be cool. Again, I just we can't go over all the details right now while we finalize everything, but it's going to be really cool. So let's go over and let me sit down and talk to you about these critical cutoff times. Okay, well, it stopped raining, so I'm just going to sit on the porch. We're supposed to have sun and clouds today, Thunderstorms tomorrow, thunderstorms the next day. Thank goodness we came out here yesterday and cut this So grass. when you go to that page over there, if you want to just go over there and read it, you can. But the first thing I want to talk about is feeding. You know, you always hear this talk about not feeding grasses in the summertime. Well, that really is more so for a cool season. Warm season grasses, they call it warm season. we got to keep your light feedings up all summer long. So... PGF complete, 1648 for most lawns. Um, if you have high phosphorus, you'll use the 1608. And if you have low phosphorus, the 101010, the PGF balance. So yes, you can come out here every three or four weeks and do a light coat on the lawn, just below the bag rate. Just keep light nutrients, light nutrients, that's all you want to do. That's what we want to feed all the way through the summertime. I know you're going to hear people say don't put fertilizer down in the summertime, but it's a warm season grass. And if you're not in the middle of a drought, feed the grass. If you're in the middle of a drought, yeah, you cut back on fertilizer. But feed your warm season long, keep feeding it. Next is I wrote up a thing about building your soil. That is so critical and it really has helped out our lawns. Pumping down good carbon via humichar. This is the time of year where you can just keep pumping it out, pumping it out, pump it out. Now remember, we design humichar not to have anything else in it. We didn't want any nutrients in it so that we could put it down as heavy and as often as we want it. That's the whole purpose of this. We don't want anything else in it. We don't want any nutrients. We don't want any iron. We don't want anything else in it. It has no impact on your actual lawn. It's specifically designed to pump carbon and humic acid into your soil. So you can put it out as often as you want and as heavy as you want. The other thing this year, we've started to put out the Dirt Booster to increase the organic matter and using the microbial packs, that are the fungus packs. Now we're injecting fungus spores into our lawn so that the good mycorrhizal fungi will start to develop in our lawns and that good fungus it battles bad fungus, it helps with moisture, um, it helps the plants get more nutrients out of the soil. So definitely if you, if you the dirt, a lot of people are out there now are starting to use Dirt Booster on the lawn and it is not, it is not something where you're going to see a stimulated response. If you want to see a stimulated response, put fertilizer on your lawn. This is building your soil so you can use less fertilizer. Core aeration. This is definitely a time where you want to be out core aerating. Fall, cool season guys typically will core aerate in the spring and the fall. 
we do it during the growing season. Now is the time. You're going to let water penetrate the soil, you're going to get oxygen in there, and you're going to relieve soil compaction. Core aeration. Now when I do my core aeration, that video is coming up probably next week. All right, well, in the summertime, I always pick up my plugs. I have nice, pretty grass. I don't want plugs all over my lawn. It's going to dull my blades. Everyone's going to say, well, it returns nutrients to your lawn. No, it doesn't. It's the same soil that's already sitting there. If you want to return nutrients to your lawn, put down some fertilizer. Pick up the cores because they cause a mess. And the cores sitting on top of Bermuda will actually leave yellow spots because they actually sort of kill the Bermuda sitting there. If you've ever left a garden hose on your lawn uh, overnight for 24 hours, you go to move it and you have that yellow stripe, same thing with all those thousands of cores on your lawn. Just, I use a lawn sweeper and I sweep them up. You'll see that video coming up. Army worms. Um, surprisingly, I can report and I put in here that as of July 17th, I have not seen any army worms I've been testing. And I have not seen a lot of army worm moths. I have a moth catcher running out back. I have had reports from you guys down in Texas, they're having some bad problems further down south with army worms and sod worms. And I talk about doing that test using a little bit of duo, double kill, and then spraying a little bit like a triazocide on your lawn, just a little test, just to see if you see any. Once you see them, then you need to be aware and watch for them. But as of right now, they're not an issue here for us here in Georgia. I'm sure they will be coming up here soon. Remember, the moths actually travel up and they migrate and then they travel back down. So it's that cycle. Um, I am seeing a lot of beetles. And I talk in here about uh, preventing grubs or killing grubs. I'm starting to see a lot of black beetles. And those are those chafer beetles. The beetles dig down in your soil, they lay the eggs, and that produces new grubs. So, I did a video about preventing a preventative, an organic preventative that you can use, but I really like the double kill product. The double kill product is targeting those adult grubs and killing what's eating your roots right now, and that's important. So don't rely on preventative to solve your adult grub problem. Uh, Let's see here, supplemental sprays. If you want to put down super juice, when I'm putting down super juice, this time of year is a great time to use it. It's not, remember, super juice is not a fertilizer, it's a supplement. We're putting it down, it has a little bit of nutrients, but it has humic acid, fulvic acid, has micronutrients, has 4% iron. The new super juice has 4% iron, by the way. It's the new formula for this year. I'm actually mixing that and I'm mixing in a microbial pack, the good fungus pack, every time I spray it. Spray it late in the evening, water it in, and just leave it alone. So yes, it's not a bad time for a supplemental spray. Fungus and dollar spot. Uh, this is a good time that you have to walk your lawn and look for any fungus. Because we've been doing the, I believe, because we've been doing the dirt booster, adding the organic matter with a good fungus, I haven't seen a single spot of fungus on my lawn this year. I really think that has helped. Um, but if you need to treat for fungus, you need to treat for fungus. People are, everyone keeps asking, does a fungicide impact the good fungus inside of your soil? And the answer is, is yes, it can have an impact for several weeks of setting back that good fungus. But if you keep hitting it with that, that, uh, that fungus spray, uh, you, it should have no problem recolonizing. Seeding. This is, remember, warm season grasses need to be seeded while it's warm. It has to be consistently in the 80s to, to start your seeding. So if you have any seeding to do, which I don't recommend on Bermuda or warm season, but if you do have any seeding, now is the time. We're not like cool season grasses. Cool season people really focus on the fall for seeding. We don't. We have to have really a 60 day window of warm temperatures for that seed to grab and germinate. So you want a 60 day window in the 80s, which means your deadline is probably July. And for me, is July and August. That's as late as I can go. After that, I don't want to seed. It's a warm season grass. So you want to do that. So why am I telling you this? Well, I'm telling you this because I've learned through my own mistakes. <laughs> I came out here, what was it, last year or year before, I came out here and did a late season scalp. And guess what happened? 
man, the cold weather moved in. We got a cold snap. It dropped down highs in the 60s, lows in the 40s. And I was like, dude, this lawn is never going to grow back in time. <laughs> so understand warm season grasses. 80s, 90s, warm season grasses love it. As long as it has water. Bermuda loves this crap. It loves the heat as long as you can give it some water. Right now, we're in a great pattern. We're in a great pattern where we're having every day or every other day, we're having a thunderstorm come through. Thank goodness we've got growth regulator on this lawn. So I just want you to plan a little bit. Think ahead. Sort of look at your calendar and say to yourself, if I'm going to do a core aeration, I need to do it before this date. Because Doc says that i got to have at least six weeks of 80s before I do something like that. Same thing. So you got August, September, October. My grass is gonna be green in October, I guarantee it. But do I wanna put down a slow release eight week fertilizer at that point for my lawn? Because for Bermuda, we really don't wanna be have a bunch of nutrients pushing it once the cold weather moves in. That's the time where we can switch over to this new fertilizer, which is instant, short-term, quick-release fertilizer. It's gonna be pretty cool. So we've used something like this on some of our lawns, which is the, the it's similar to it, which is an all fast release 10, 10, 10, the PGF balance, and that's made for low phosphorus. But I wanted something that was quicker, something that was in a DG particle with humic that everyone could use, even cool season, warm season, all grasses could use this new product. It's gonna be cool, but plan, think ahead, don't do crazy aggressive stuff to your lawn once we start getting out now is the time to do that stuff you can mess with your lawn all you want i'm think i think we're going to come out here and do a really hard cut to this lawn and do a really heavy core aeration i wish i could find a verticutter <laughs> they don't make a verticutter that you can rent not a scarifier scarifier will just tear up the ground if i could find a real slicing verticutter um, that would do it. I would do it on my lawn, but I can't. So instead what I'm gonna do is a heavy core aeration I just need to get a whole bunch of people out here because not only are we got to do the cut Not only do we need to do the core aeration, but we pick up all our plugs Because it just leaves a mess out here if we don't pick them up and it of course it ruins the real mowers, too Anyways guys hit that subscribe button. I promise you I'll, I'll give you an update on that new product and show you some of the testing I'll record it for you. Talk to you later. Doc